In this lesson, we're going to cover how to uh, reference uh, files in, from one scene to another. Um, and the reason you want to do this is because, say, you're doing an animation and you have multiple scenes, but they all use the same character rig. Let's go hop over to our character rig real quick here. And maybe you're still working on it, or maybe, you know, just how production goes, things are always changing. Um, and the model may be changing, the textures may be changing, but the animation needs to stay, and you need to animate it in those scenes to be able to be able to tell what it's doing. Maybe it's interacting with the scene in some way. Um, so what we'll have is we'll have two separate scenes, at least in this case. You know, there may be more, uh, depending on what type of objects you may you know, bring in. Maybe each prop has its own scene and, and so on, so you could edit in those. Um, but in here, uh, this is a scene that if we need to change anything on the rig, we do it here. Um, if we need to change model, if we need to change the texture, uh, do minor rig fixes. Um, ideally, the controls are not changing. They're, they're keeping their name, they're keeping their positions. You don't have to change those. You know, Hopefully, if it's a change, it's on the skeleton. Because if the controls change, that's going to affect how the animation uh, is going on to them that's already been done. So ideally, you're not doing anything that's going to affect the actual control itself. Maybe, you know, if you want to add on new things, so maybe I add on scale to this because it's now, you know, it has that. Ad adding on different controls to it would be fine. Um, but you wouldn't want to change how any of these currently work. It's going to screw up the animation that you currently have uh, or, or even have their name. It's not a place to go change the names. Um, but, you know, we're considering this made for the most part, but if, if the model changes, that's fine because no keyframes is being are being put on those. Um, so again, this scene's all for affecting the model file, affecting the textures, maybe some of the rigging parts, but no animation goes on to it. And then we have our we'll make a new scene here, and this scene will be completely for animation. You know, maybe we throw lights in here too, but it's it's mostly about animation. Um, and so uh, first I'll reference in my scene so I can see what's going on here. And, and by the way, you check your scale first. Um, make, make sure your scene is as big as your character um, and, and so on. That you know, It's ideally something you're doing as you're working, um, but people have a tendency to sometimes um, you know, work in centimeter in one file, work in feet in the other, and then you have this really tiny set to this giant character. Um, so the default settings in here are fine. Let's go ahead and reset these so we're starting with whatever you have. And... The only thing I'm really worried about in here is, by default, it's set to new namespace, um, file name. And I don't want this. I want new namespace string, and I want something very specific to whatever I'm bringing in. In this case, we'll start with a character. I'll actually name it after the character. So, you know, not just character, because there might be multiple characters in there, and that gets confusing. Um, the reason I, I want a specific name string, let's go ahead and bring this in, and we could look at it, is because it'll affect the name of the control. So let me make sure, see what units this is in by default. I'm going to change this up to feet. And click save. Actually, I'm going to go change my frame rate too, because uh, always pay attention to this stuff. Uh, it's on 24 by default. I want it up on 30. And that's just my preference. I want to animate at 30 frames a second. So um, you could do 24. That's common for animation. 15 is kind of the low end, but 30 is a nice ideal. Um, okay, so if you look at any of these controls, notice that it's changed the name. And anything that gets referenced in has this namespace on, on it to identify it um, as something special or unique. Uh, in theory, I could reference in this character three, four times and have four, five instances of it in here. And as long as I have uh, a unique um, namespace for it, it should work out because then there won't be any name file clashes. So, you know, if we have expressions running that are looking for certain things, or even animation, when animation loads up, it is looking for a specific name saying this keyframe is attached to that name. And so if we had it by uh, file name, well, maybe you're iterating as you go. Maybe, um, you know, you have version one, version two, version three. If you load in Jane Doe V1 and start with that and start animating, and then you give somebody, you know, Jane Doe V2 because of some updates, and they swap that out. Well, now the file names change, and all your keyframes go away because they are attached to Jane Doe V1 left-hand uh, IK control. Um, so by using a namespace string, uh, we, we prevent that from happening. We always keep our animation. So that that's the character reference, in, and it's not in the scene. If I make changes back in that original file, um, it'll update into this one when I open it again. So let's, let's start to do that. Uh, I'm going to make another reference here, and I'm going to bring in the scene this time. So I'll call this, uh, again, something specific to 
uh, this particular scene because there might be other scenes that I'm bringing in. I don't want to call it just scene. Uh, and I think I set up this one. If it comes in uh, full scale, then that's right. I don't see anything. Oh, wait, no, it's down there. Maybe I set up the wrong one. Yep, so this is the tiny one. Let me see if it was the other one I set up. Um, so I can go into Reference Editor. This is actually a good example of how to switch this. Um, so here's uh, the namespace I used on it. Here's the file it's referencing. Uh, maybe it wasn't that one. So I'm going to... I could either change the name in here or I could right-click on this, go File, uh, and... Where is it? Maybe uh, Reference? Yeah, Replace Reference. And let's try pre-lighting without the two on there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so there's a good example of how I could swap this out for whatever and, and start animating in here if I have multiple scenes. So now we have this character in here, and so I have my layers on here, and I could I could hide and unhide stuff in here. That should be fine. Um, so maybe let's see which outfit do I like. Uh, this one seems to go better color-wise with the scene, I think. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, let's see. Let's turn off everything that isn't what I need to see. So polygons right now, and I'll just turn on the NURBS curves. And so I'm not uh, grabbing the scene by accident. I'm going to click this filter right here. This prevents me from selecting polygons. So as long as that isn't on, I can't grab polygons anymore. And we'll bring her up since so she's on the floor. And so now I can animate her going around doing whatever in the scene. So, I don't know, we'll just block out something really simple of her just kind of sliding around. Oops. I've got auto key on, so it's just, it's keying every time I do this. You know, something very robotic here. Okay. So I've started to put animation on this. Um, that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm not changing the textures. I'm not uh, affecting the model. So let's look at this. And on this dress, it's really faceted still. Uh, I don't like that. I want to fix that. But I don't want to do it in this scene. This, is, this scene is just for animation. So if I need to go make a fix on the model, I need to go back and do that in the original. So I'm going to go ahead and save this scene off, because this is my animation scene. I've already done some animation. Let's assume it's way better than what I just did, and she's actually doing some walking or something. Um, let's call this, uh, I don't know, an animation. I'd have a better name than that, but whatever. It's a demo. Uh, so I'm going to go back to her original rig file. And let's turn on that dress. Uh, nope, not that one. There. And I'm going to go ahead and soften the normals on this so it doesn't look all faceted like that. Uh, let's see. Soften edge. That's still not doing it. Um, normals, sometimes it doesn't always work. Uh, we'll do average normals. That's better. Well, no, now we got that black ring. Let's uh, normals set to face. That's better. Now let's try soften. Holy cow, what's going on there? Let's try average again. All right, let me look at my normal faces. Maybe they're facing multiple directions. Um, Display, polygons, uh, face normals. And, and this is exactly the case of where you'd be using the stuff of like, hey, this this doesn't look right. What the heck's going on here? Oh, yeah, look at that. What, whatever's going on there. Um, so I'm going to turn my normal size down. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to figure out, are some of these facing in and some of them facing out? They are not. Oh, I see what's going on there. Uh, we got this face here, which is trying to average with uh, for the inside. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to select everything. You select this. I know this looks this looks wrong, but it's the life of an artist. Um, and now I'm going to go normals. Uh, average. No, it's not. 
set to face. Uh, sometimes once you soften them, uh, it has trouble undoing that. Uh, I'm going to do normal set to face and then soften without that. Uh, nope, I guess average is the best one. Weird. But I think it's something because you know we have those faces inside. Let me uh, look at this in wireframe, make sure we don't have some other stuff here. Oh, you know what? Let me make sure my soft selection isn't making that worse than it actually is. Oh, and I've got all the legs and everything. That's that's not what I want. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's try to deselect these as best we can. Okay, you know what? New plan. We're just gonna paint select. So this is aside from referencing, but uh, this is the kind of stuff you're fixing while doing it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab all these just on the outside here. We're not going to deal with the inside just yet. Oh, it is getting the inside some. Well, I'll deselect those. Okay. And now we'll do set to face, normals, average normals. We'll say whatever, close enough. It's doing that weird thing, but I don't. Holy cow. Well, I'll be damned. I, I have no idea what's going on in this model, but that's something to fix for another time. Uh, Whatever, we'll call that good. It's different, <laughs> and you'll see the update. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off um, uh, seeing the normals now. But whatever, this is the kind of stuff you troubleshoot and you do it back in this file. Uh, let's turn our textures back on, so it's at least semi better. We'll call it better from that side. Um, though I did destroy the legs. Let's. Uh, I, I can't let it go. Just gonna fix the legs real quick here. Okay, so at least that's slightly better. And uh, made a bunch of history, so I'll go edit, delete by type, non-deformer history. This will delete all the construction history, but not the skin weighting stuff. And that might have actually been part of the problem there, is having history on there while I was doing that. But um, it's different. Let's let's run with that. At least from this angle, it looks good. I'm gonna click save and jump back to my animation. And you see it's updated in here too. So that change took effect. You know, I did all that monkeying around and my animation's still here. Um, you know, if I make any changes to this model set, if I start adding stuff in, I don't want to do it in here, I want to do it in this scene um, where I control the shaders and everything like that. Um, maybe I decide, I don't know, this bed needs to be much shinier. So I'm going to hop over into um, this scene. And I'm going to bring open up the, come on, right click menu, uh, material attributes for this uh, headboard here. And maybe I decided, you know, this needs to look really glossy. Um, not that you can really see, there, now you're starting to catch it. I think that's all the same shader there, so. Um, Yeah, you see it changing on the whole bed there, so maybe it's, it needs to be more glossy. So now that I'm happy with that, I save this scene, and I jump back to my animation scene. And there we go. I got a shiny bed that I didn't have before. Um, so this is a really powerful way for you to be able to keep working, um, not have everything tied in one scene. And, and again, you know, what if this wasn't the only scene I was working on? What if this character is in, like, ten different Maya scenes? and I made that change, I don't want to go update that in 10 different scenes. I want that to update it once and have it propagate to all those other scenes. 
Um, so this is a great way to save yourself time as you're working and maybe updating things. Maybe you only had enough time to, okay, I got the model done. I need to start animating. I'll get the pictures done later. And with referencing, you can do that. Um, and again, so I'd only use this scene for doing animation. I, you know, I can set up lights and stuff like that. But as far as modifying this geometry, wouldn't do it in here. There's, there's things referencing won't even let you do. So I can't, I can't delete any of the stuff in here. Um, I don't think I could cut in geometry, but I wouldn't want to because then if I go change it back in the original scene, now you've got a conflict of like, hey, I got new information over here, but you got new information. Which one's the right one to use? Um, you can lighten here. Uh, change on the lights. Don't change the shader settings. I know shading, the, the shaders are, you know, how the lights are affecting it, but go back in your original scene and, and try to tweak them in there if you can. Um, you know, what you can also do is um, if you build your lights in here, you could reference that back into your original model and then turn off the reference of, of the different files. And that's one way to do it. Or, or save a copy out just so you have some lights to reference in. Um, but that's referencing. Uh, it's a great tool. You, you got to use it respectively. There's things you can and can't do. And you guys will start to learn that stuff as you play with it. But if you kind of go by the rule of don't change the model, don't change the rig, don't change the textures or the shaders in a reference scene, do that back in the original. Do do animation. Uh, you can make lights. Those are okay. Change your red render settings, all that. Uh, do that stuff in here, but not the actual production stuff. Uh, and you're, you're usually pretty safe if you can follow those rules. So uh, good luck to you guys, and hopefully that speeds you up some. See you next lesson.